QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Reversing entry, accrued interest with the help of Excel. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitar homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're going to be opening up our financial statement reports, the balance sheet and the income statement by going to the reports drop down, company and financial, and go on down to that balance sheet standard. Changing the dates up top in the customized reports from 010121 to 022821, February 28th being our cutoff date. That's the date as of that we want our financial statements to be correct as of with the help and use of our adjusting entries. Then we're going to go to the reports drop down. Company and financial open up that profit and loss, the P&L, and that's going to be on 010121 to 022821 for the two-month time period. Now, last time, we entered an adjusting entry with the help of our little Excel worksheet over here just to give a better look at it in terms of, of what the effect of it will be. That was a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable, representing the fact that according to our amortization table over here, and you, if you don't have access to these, you should have access to these Excel worksheets so you can take a look at them. If you do not, that's okay. You could follow along here as well. But here's our short-term Excel worksheet where we had interest that's going to be due on March of next year. But And we wanted to pull in 15 days of it into the current time period because 15 days of it was in February that has been accrued. So to pull that, so to be on a proper accrual basis, we should recognize the $56 of interest expense, even though we haven't paid it and will not pay it until next month. Just like if we were to have like rent or something like that, and we didn't have to pay it for this month, we paid rent like every six months or something, we'd still have incurred the rent. So we should be recording the expense and the other side would be the payable. Now, the problem with this is that now when you think about paying it, so now we, we've got this payable on the books here. If I go to the balance sheet. If I go to the balance sheet, I'm going to say, okay, now we've got this interest payable on the books. The problem is if you go back to the normal kind of process in terms of the accounting process for the bookkeeping system, the bookkeeper is now going to say, hey, what is that interest payable? I have no idea what to do with that. I mean, does that mess up my loan payments? Because you notice what the, they, the bookkeeper plans to do is make a payment next month. And they're going to make a payment in accordance with this schedule. And this, and if they look at this schedule and make the payment, as we saw with the loan payment, they would have to write a check and they're already dealing with two accounts, meaning they would have to write a check, they would have to decrease the checking account, and then they've got to apply out the proper interest and principal, which would be the one hundred and twelve fifty and the principal of this amount. So in, in other words, if I, let's just do the journal entries on the right to, to see what, the, what we're talking about, what kind of the problem would be here. So let's assume that we didn't have the accrual in place and we were just going to record an interest payment according to this amortization schedule. What would happen is I'm going to do this with debits and credits. I'm going to put the, some of the credits on top because I think that's the easiest way to do it. But it would be the same for the check, the, the check that we would write when we wrote a check for the loan payments over here on on the first tab right when we wrote these two checks similar process so if there was no accrual it would look something like this we'd say well cash would be going down it would be a credit of and that would be a decrease to cash so cash would be decreasing by that 117 or that 1742 about it's rounded we cut off the pennies over here and then we'd have the interest expense would be for the amount of the amount on this table so it'd be for that amount and then the principal reduction which would be loan payable would be this amount and so that would be going down that would decrease the loan payable and these two debits add up to that credit this would be the normal transaction cash goes down loan payable goes down and interest expense goes up but now we have this payable on the books now and that kind of muddies up the water so if i didn't reverse this to properly record this transaction it's more complicated now so the, to record the transaction, we'd say, well, cash would still be going down by the 1,742. And, and then we'd have the interest expense. Well, let's do this. But we'd also have the uh, interest payable that needs to go down because it's on the books. It needs to go away because now we have this payable and now we're paying off the payable. So the payable's on the books as, as a credit. We would need to debit the payable which would be for that 5625 and then we would have the interest expense 
which would be only for half the interest because half of this month happened last period. So the interest expense would only be once again the 56.25. We'd have to split it out between the two periods. And then we'd have the uh, loan payable, which is going to be the same uh, 1630. So we'd have to break out basically this interest expense. And so this will complicate the journal entry for a journal entry that was already fairly complex. And so, and even if you think about it on a, on a more simplified basis, you might have the bookkeeping process just simply record a transaction that would credit cash, credit cash for the 1642 and debit loan payable, payable for uh, the same amount. And then just have us record the adjusting entries for interest and any kind of breakout of accrued interest at the end of the month. So in any case, this this added piece kind of complicates things. I don't want to complicate things for the data entry side of things. I want it to be as easy as possible. That's why we're going to basically reverse uh, this this transaction. That's the idea of the reversing entries. Okay, so let's see that what that would look like then just in terms of Excel first, because this is going to make it more kind of transparent to see. So if I go back on over to our worksheet, what I want to do is say, okay, this is what I want to make the financial statements correct. And then I'm going to look at two more columns to basically look at the reversing entries. And this is these are the ones that I'm going to going to reverse back out to see what happens to get us back to where it'll be logistically easy for the bookkeeper to keep on doing their normal process of data input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two columns to do this. I'm going to put my cursor on I. I'm going to highlight over to J or select over, left click and uh, insert. I'm going to insert two columns. And so now let's do some formatting here. So I'll just do some formatting. These are going to be the reversing entries. So I'm going to call them the reversing entries. And this is going to be the uh, trial balance. And this is as of the first day after the day of the cutoff, meaning the, the first day of the next period, which I'm going to, I'm going to say is 030121. Uh, now I'm just going to do some formatting here. I, I'd like to just basically format this column in the same format as this column. So I'm going to select this entire column here. And I'm going to go to the Home tab, Clipboard Format Painter, and just paintbrush this over. This is, again, we're doing Excel formatting, so we, you will have access to this worksheet if you're working along, and it'll be pre-formatted if, if you want to not do all this formatting, but just to see how you can put this together. And then we're going to go to the, this column. I want to I wanna paintbrush this on over. So I'm going to hit the old paintbrush up top and paintbrush that over. And then I'm going to do the sum function here. This is going to be equal to our adjusting column plus the reversing entry. So the reversing entry is going to take us from where we stood as of the date, the point in time the financial statements were created. And then we're going to reverse out as of the first day of the next period. And then we're going to copy that down. I'm just going to auto fill that down like so. And then I'll copy these bottom across as well. I'm just going to auto fill that across. And so there we have it. So now I want to just basically reverse exactly what happened here. So we had a, a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable. Now these reversing entries will look unnatural. They'll, they'll look weird because normally we don't credit an expense. They only go up uh, typically in the debit direction. So these, these are going to look funny, but hopefully they, you, you'll be able to see why logistically they kind of work in order to separate our duties between the adjusting process and the uh, period end process of um, of data input. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to insert and then I'm going to say that this is going to be an adjusting adjusting entry and we can number them like one and this is going to be reversing entry and I'm going to say this is two and I'll just number them across so we can we can kind of differentiate between the two. Now I'm going to use the same formatting we did up top meaning I'm just going to say this debit or not the debit, but the expense on top, interest on the bottom, and then I'll flip the debits and credits. So I'm gonna flip the debits and credits. So in other words, I'm not gonna flip the reverse the account order so that the debits will be on top. You can do so with one that's this small, but when you start doing that with really long transactions, it's a lot easier to just, just put the same ordering of the accounts and then reverse the debits and credits. That's a lot easier to do. Uh, and it'll look funny, but a lot easier to do. Okay, so now we're going to record this out. So I'm going to go down to the interest expense down here. 
And I'm going to say this will be an interest expense. And this is going to be equal to this uh, 56. And it's going to be a credit, which is funny. And then we're going to go to the interest payable. And we're going to reverse that out. Interest payable. I'm going to reverse that out. And that'll, that'll go back down to zero. Now also note that as we reverse this on the income statement side of things, if we ran the report for the three month time period, January through March, and we'll do this in QuickBooks, this will make more sense when we run it in QuickBooks. And I know it's kind of complex to look at it in Excel like, here, like this, but it's a lot more transparent to see it this way. We're gonna have to zoom into reports and whatnot to see it in QuickBooks. So we'll do that next time. But just realize that now, uh, if, if we think about this, then if we ran the report in QuickBooks for three months, uh, January, February, March, our cutoff date being the end of February, and then, and then the reversing entry entered in March, this is basically what our income statement would look like. However, what if we were running the income statement just for March, just the month of March, as we kind of would, or you would think about if the year had ended, you had the closing process, and then you were, you were running it the next January, then you would only have uh, this amount, a negative expense uh, in, in that current month. So let's see if we can reflect that here on, in Excel just to show us what's going on. I'm going to put my cursor on, on L, right click. I'm going to insert another tab. And then all the way down, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the same trial balance. I'm going to say this is the trial balance for March, just March. Whereas this one is the year to date March. So three months, this is just one month. So then I'm going to be copying this down. So let's copy that on down. Let's take it all the way down to, to draws, and that's it. And then the closing process would be that all of this stuff, and this is going to happen automatically in QuickBooks. Most people don't really understand you know, that, but if you see it transparently, or if you see it in a transparent software like Excel, uh, then it, it might make more sense when you kind of change the dates in QuickBooks. So if we took then, the, these are the income statement that we're going to close out. We're going to close these out basically to the equity section. So in other words, you know, if I if I looked at just March, then I'm going to say this was going to be the sum equals the sum of the prior equity, this number, and all of this. And then if I was to, to basically copy across our, our debits and credits and our, and our net income, copying that across with the auto fill handle, if I can grab that fill handle, so now, now it's out of balance by the 56, which of course is our reversing entry. So then if I, if I copy now on, on this cell, instead of adding these two up, I'm just going to show our adjustments that are happening in the month of March. So I'm going to say this is just going to equal the blue column and I'm going to copy that down. And so now we have our, our 56 there and that, and now we have a negative net income. Let's just put brackets around this thing. So I'm going to bracket this. Let's go ahead and, and go to here and put the brackets around there. So, so there we have it. So now this is just the month of March. So if you look at just March, then all we have in there is this negative uh, expense, which is weird. Like you shouldn't really have a negative expense. But once we actually make the payment, meaning once we make this payment, uh, and they record it, if they record it this way, the normal way that they record it, they're going to be debiting interest expense by the 113 or the 11250 when they do that recording. So as of 315, we'll be back, we'll be back correct again, because they'll debit this account by the, that, by the full amount. And then we'll have the 50, we'll have the 5625 or 56, whatever positive amount as of that point in time. So in other words, it's wrong right now, really on an accrual basis, but it will be right on the 15th. And that's in alignment with kind of our, uh, our system to be correct as of a point in times for certain things so that we can make the logistic process easier. So if you give this to basically a, a bookkeeper, they're gonna say, hey, it's, I got a negative expense, that's really weird. But you say, hey, that's fine, because you just record things like you normally do, and it'll be correct after you make the next payment. And that, and that might be better than having this kind of payable hanging around where they're going to say, hey, I don't understand that payable. And they may not be able to record the next transaction like basically they, they normally would. So that's kind of the idea of the adjusting entry process. And again, I know this worksheet's a, a little bit um, 
confusing to look at, but it really is a lot more transparent to kind of see what, what's going on with this whole, because we're kind of combining together the cl closing process, the adjusting entries, and the reversing entries. And when you do it in, in QuickBooks, you can't really see it broken out. And so basically this, this, base, this income statement right here is the proper income statement on an accrual basis as of the cutoff date, 228. This income statement represents the three month time period after we do our reversing entry and this income statement represents the one month time period after having closed out the prior two months. And now you just have the income statement for that for one period, that one month of March, which only includes this negative amount. We'll see that when we do these transactions in QuickBooks next time. And then we run the reports for these various dates.